Ayan, another exciting expression. <laughs> Look at that. They are looking at something, something interesting. <laughs> He's pole <all> dancing. <laughs> us to make sure it's safe for us to come out and some of them remain on the boats on tenders uh, scouting looking with binoculars on the guns they do a wonderful job they are very organized Zodiac Island. <laughs> yeah. They're waiting their turn. They're gonna come one by one to pick us up from here. <laughs> that is cute. This, place. this is the loading area. I don't know what those are. This one rolls down and goes all the way. Oh my gosh. So the green one is for this side and the red yes. one is for that side? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. So it's to roll the rope yeah. into the spool. Wow. It's amazing. The size of this rope is like huge. Yeah. Look at that. It's like the size of your arm. It's very heavy also. Yeah. It is? Especially when it's wet, huh? <laughs> yeah. He's not kidding. It's pretty heavy. The Zodiac Island is breaking up. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> we get lucky and we get Chris again. Yeah. Alright, so we do we play this game again. Uh, Who spots wildlife first? He's right over there on the corner. You heard saw it? You did! Too easy. <laughs> Jeez! And the water, yeah, the water, you are there. spoiling it all. From your room? You saw that from your room? <laughs> Jesus yeah, they did. Christ. They did. Okay. Wow. Three. Four at one time. Two and two. Oh my gosh! So four at one time from my yeah. like, oh. like the Zodiacs. The Zodiacs are down there. There's two walking Yeah, this way. all the Zodiacs went over there and there was two polar bears. So we have two all down there and yeah. one here. I, I knew about three, but I didn't so, know about four. No, I saw, I watched one go over to the, the other side, the back side. All right. <laughs> well, let's well, see huh? what yeah, happens. Yeah. At least there are polar bears, we know that. Yeah. <laughs> Whether we'll see them, that's a different story. I did not expect that, you know. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I don't think my camera is working well with the cold. My camera is not working well in the cold. You can see a different one too. Carmen, it's right behind you. No, it's still there. Still there, sleeping or something. He's not moving. Yeah. Can, can you see the face, Carol? See the face with your. Uh, uh, it's a tiny little one. Well, uh, where is it? Well, it's not tiny, but it's hard to see. Right in front of you now, like a straight line to the to the eyes. 
it's a tiny, it, it's a, like a little bub. If you follow the horizon of the stones to the eyes, it's like a little yellowish bump. How can you tell it's shallow? You can see the bottom. Oh, you can, oh, you can see the bottom. Wow, it's clear. Yeah, you can see the bottom. You see? Here, too. Oh, wow. We can walk over to the power bear. <laughs> you see another one? Oh my gosh. Here's a bigger one. He's walking. He went behind the, the boulders. Oh. oh my gosh. There are so many. What do you see the front? There is one walking back there. I lost it now. Where the mother and the cub? You must keep pee. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Mother and the cub? Can't see them. He has really good binoculars, though. So. Oh, what? What do you see? Oh, yeah, back there, right there. Oh my God, there are so many. Where's the other? That is a big bird sitting on the shore. <laughs> oh, he's sitting up. No, he's sitting oh, shoot. Oh, there he is. He's so far away. Oh, that was nice. I wish I had it. It's only one. <laughs> only one right now. Yeah. But the two of them vanished behind the ridge. And the uh, other one was just standing up. You saw that sitting up, looking at Yeah, he was sitting up. Again. Maybe they're making a big way around. Chris, where do you think is the mother and the cub? Which way? Behind the ridge. Behind the ridge. Yeah. Do you see the walrus in the water? Yeah, we're being ignored. We didn't care. Yeah, we're just slowly heading towards her. Perfect. On my way. Too many things happening at the same time. Oh, what is all that? Walruses behind us a lot. Mother and cows, yeah. All right. I, I officially do not know what to take first, the walruses or the mother and cub. <laughs> Where is the mother and cub? Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. <laughs> They're amazing. Oh gosh. Look at that. A whole group of them. There are more back there. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh! Wow! Oh! Oh my goodness. Wow. Maybe they'll come closer. Yeah, they're coming closer. You think they're coming this way? Mm -hmm. Oh my god, that would be awesome. And there are two more back there, like three more. Listen to that sound. Coming, <laughs> coming straight to us. That would be awesome. That would be so awesome. Wow. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> that was a nice flip. <laughs> Is that great or what? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> How many times have I said that? <laughs> but it's true. Unbelievable. Wow. That was awesome. I saw that and I was like... <laughs> Profile. <laughs> oh my gosh. They are there, they are going to the ship. <laughs> wow. So you don't think the mom and the cub is gonna come out and oh, say hi? Gonna come up. They, go, they have to, they have your yeah. time to come out. Pretty uh, shallow. Very shallow. shallow. <laughs> Very shallow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lift your engine a little bit. Oh, there they are. You can smell <laughs> walrus. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, there's a big herd over there. Yeah. yeah. Ah, that's what it yeah. is. No. <laughs> I can't smell them yet. Oh, you can't smell them yet? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> I think my nose is frozen. <laughs> Where do you see the heart? Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> now it came. <laughs> mm. <laughs> All right, yeah. The heart was there on that island? 4D. Sorry? The herd, uh, there was a herd of walruses in that island? Yes. Yeah? I was surprised they were around here. It's so, I'm blind. It's so yeah, yeah, I mean, it's all, it's all connected to tidal zones when the walrus lay on the, on the rocks and not. Uh -huh. And then they go in the water and then they come back they out. Pull off? Yeah. yeah. Some kind of duck. Which one was it? Eider. 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 Eider duck. Eider duck. We will um, try to get in and see if we can get um, close enough to see it from the Soviet. Okay, we're but gonna go and see the monument. The passage here is very, very shallow and then it places so And so far, like in Iceland. Yeah. <laughs> the troll is coming in from this side. You did the troll. <laughs> <laughs> It smelled, it does smell like sulfur. I don't know why. No, oh, this place is so atmospheric. The smell and the fog and, oh my God, it's kind of spooky, but really nice. Oh, that's the monument, right there, behind you. I think that's a monument. It looks like the monument. <laughs> Unless it's a walrus. <laughs> We're sorry, rock. It's a rock. It's a rock. Yeah, it is there. Close enough. Guys, it's all from the other camp. Everybody's ready to help all the time. Can we keep us Hey, the more the merrier. <laughs> we got clipped in. <laughs> Look, I can see our people all the way back there. <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> it's a narrow island, I guess. Huh? Can you see? Uh, yeah, I can see. No. Oh. The, the monument. The monument? I don't know where the monument is. Yeah, I think that's our cruise ship back there. Well, the skull. Where is the skull? I don't know. We are looking for a skull. We are now we're kind of now kind of the log is under the bear. Yeah. Bear is just over the horizon. Right. Mm, that is a bear. Is it moving? No, it's not moving. No, it's not moving. It's just laying there. There, but we are moving. <laughs> yeah, I know. A <laughs> yeah, bear, but it's far away. 
walking down. Oh, this is walking down? Yeah, so you guys, you guys turn around. Oh, you're the best. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> She's asking her to go back. <laughs> We're turning around. <laughs> Yay. Yay, Chris. <laughs> That's the mother in the car. Oh, my gosh. I guess she's coming down. I can't see her, but everybody else can. If you know where it is, you can see it with your bare eyes. Yeah, yeah. You, could. you can see it with your bare eyes? No pun intended. With your bare eyes? With your bare eyes. <laughs> My bare eyes. Oh, I can see something moving up there. Oh, gosh. I can see something moving. They're so sweet because this is shallow and it's not easy for them. I can see them, yes. Yes, I can see them. Oh my gosh. Oh, I don't know if I can get them. Oh my gosh, there she is. It's moving. It's moving quickly. I haven't seen the cub. Get back here right now. No, she should let that cub come over to us. Oh. Did you get it? I just see the big bear. She was moving really fast. Was and with the zodiac, like right. yeah, with the zodiac moving and her moving, it was difficult to get. That was a lot of polar bears. A lot. A lot of polar bears in yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Is that usual? Here today we had at least four and uh, two, maybe three in the morning is now seven. Wow. But that, I think it was more than four here today, right? Don't you think that it was more than four here? No, the mother and the cub we have seen from the other side already. Ah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's how we count. If yeah. We <laughs> count them again, and then uh, we see a lot of them. Well, for me, only counts half because I only saw the mother. <laughs> I'll take your word and other people's photographs for the cub. <laughs> It was exciting. And the walrus is my gosh. Can we look for the monument? Yeah. Huh? That's the monument. Okay. 11 o'clock. Now that we are looking for the monument, it might be a good time to give a little background to the historic significance of this narrow strip of land jutting out of Vitoya Island. It is called Andreneset because that's where the death camp of Andre's famous expedition was discovered. Andre was a Swedish engineer that died on his quest to be the first to reach the North Pole. The 19th century was an exciting time for exploration, and the story of his expedition is, is one of the most famous ones, full of adventure, intrigue, drama, mystery, and even a tragic love. There is an award-winning movie that tells it much better than I ever could but we are actually at the place where it all happened, so we have that advantage. Andre's intention was to reach the North Pole in a hydrogen balloon. It may sound outlandish, because sometimes it's easy to forget that the North Pole is not on land. Unlike the solid South Pole on Antarctica, the North Pole is a point under the shifting ice of the Arctic Ocean. So Andre's idea, which would avoid the deadly crashing ice flows, was actually hailed as the most original and remarkable attempt ever made in Arctic exploration at the time. There were many indications that the expedition was based on perfect conditions, making it very unrealistic for the Arctic. But all objections failed to dampen Andre's optimism. Whether from media pressure or his enthusiastic patriotism, he ignored lessons from his failed attempt to the previous year and tried again. The balloon was an incredible accomplishment made from three layers of silk and had eight million tiny stitching holes that were sealed with a secret formula of varnish. Andres' starting uh, place for the North Pole expeditions was Virgo Hamna, a bay on the Svalbard Danes Island where we visited two days ago. Andre's first attempt in 1896 was a festive event, with tourists visiting and Andre giving lectures. But uh, the 1897 launch was rather subdued. On the plus side, the balloon hangar 
that was used the previous year had weathered well, so it was reused and the three men bravely set off on their adventure. Unfortunately, the dire warnings regarding the perils of the expedition soon became a reality. Almost immediately after takeoff, they lost their ability to steer, and very soon afterwards, the balloon started leaking hydrogen. After only 65 hours of flight, the crew finally chose to abandon the balloon because not only it was not going towards the direction they wanted, it would also soar to dangerous heights. So when the balloon eventually landed on the Arctic ice in the middle of nowhere, they needed to continue on foot. The three men had expected and were prepared for a comfortable air trip and were completely inexperienced and unprepared for the grueling trip. After about a week of sorting out what provisions to carry and what to leave behind, the explorers started their return trip down south. They were shocked by the difficulty of the terrain. We may think of ice as being flat, but Arctic ice is anything but. They had to struggle carrying heavy loads across ice ridges that were almost two stories high. To make things worse, the drift of the ice was moving them backwards in the opposite direction of where they wanted to go, negating their efforts. Finally, the explorers resigned themselves to wintering on the ice and camped on a large ice floe, letting it take them wherever it would, which is what it had been doing anyway. The current brought their ice floe rapidly south towards Victoria, but it began to break up near the island due to the pressure and the men were forced to bring their supplies on shore. Vitoya, even if it looks unique and interesting to us right now, is a cold, barren and hospitable place to live. On this narrow strip of land in front of us, which is now named after Andre, is one of the very few spots that is not under the ice cap that covers the rest of the island. It was here that Andre and his team came ashore, and surprisingly, their morale was pretty good. Andre wrote in his diary, with such comrades as these, one should be able to manage under practically any circumstances whatsoever. Unfortunately again for the team, things fell apart rather quickly. After the months-long journey surviving on the ice, the three men were dead within a few days of moving into the island. The expedition had two means of communication with the outside world, buoys and homing pigeons. It appears more pigeons were released, but only one was ever retrieved. And that message is also from the beginning of the expedition, giving the date and the location. That was the last the world knew of the expedition's fate at the time. For the next 33 years, the expedition was shrouded in mystery, and its disappearance became part of cultural lore, not only in Sweden, but internationally as well. There was more interest in the expedition after it disappeared than even before. And when active searches over a couple of years produced no results, the myths and the rumors flourished. Vitoria was not only remote, but it was also inaccessible, because it was usually surrounded by a wide belt of thick polar ice and was often hidden by thick ice fogs. All the ships hunting seals and whales in the area avoided the island. However, the summer of 1930 was particularly warm, and that's when a Norwegian ship decided to go over for the thriving walrus colonies. Two members of the crew came ashore at this spot looking for water and accidentally found the remains of the men and their camp. And so, all of a sudden, the speculations about the Andre expedition came to an end. The discovery of, of, the, the, discovery of the expedition's fate became an international sensation. But while some questions were answered by the detailed entries, many other questions sprang up. Strindberg was buried in a shallow grave. Frankel lay in the remains of the tent, and Andre was actually sitting on a ledge above the tent with the, his rifle on his side. How did they die? How did they survive for months on the ice, but succumbed after, after just a few days on the island? Why do their diaries previously so detailed tells us so little about their end. There are several theories about how and why they died, but nothing can be proven, so the mystery of their fate will last forever.
There is a monument right here on Andreneset commemorating the three men. It is right next to their old campsite and the former rocky grave of Strindberg. Next to the monument, there are the remains of a dead polar bear, including a large skull. The bodies of the three explorers were returned to Stockholm, where they were cremated. Their return created a media sensation in Sweden, where the explorers had been idolized for all these years. They were both greatly mourned and celebrated for their heroism and their willingness to sacrifice for the dream of giving Sweden the honor to be the first to reach the North Pole. Amazingly enough, the men were keeping detailed and valuable measurements and data throughout their journey. Even though they must have been exhausted, they were recording information on their diaries and Strindberg was capturing their struggles with his two cameras. After 33 years of being frozen, his films were able to be developed and gave us many authentic insights into the efforts and challenges of the expedition. He even used the photo timer to take pictures of all three of them together. The campsite also contained many, many items that paint the picture of the daily life of the men, and they can all now be found in museums throughout Sweden. Now for the tragic love story part. Eight months before the expedition left for Svalbard, Niels Strindberg had gotten engaged to the love of his life, Anna Charrier. Her memory and love probably gave him strength to endure. During his entire expedition, Niels carried with him a photograph of her and wore a locket around his neck with another photo and a curl of her hair. He also wrote her letters and even celebrated her birthday with the rest of the team. In all his letters to Anna, Niels seemed tragically certain that they would survive the ordeal and he would return to her. Anna loved Niels equally as much and was absolutely heartbroken when the expedition team disappeared. She waited for many, many years for her love to return, but eventually she married and moved abroad. Her husband was fully aware of her true love, but was never able to help her forget. Throughout her life, Anna cherished Neil's memory and her home was filled with portraits of him. When the expedition team's remains were discovered, Anna left instructions that when she died, her heart should be buried with Neil's. And when Anna did pass away, her wish was carried out. Neil's brothers, in a secret ceremony, opened the grave and placed a little silver box with the ashes of Anna's heart next to his. So the lovers were reunited at last. The tragic Andrea expedition has transformed this narrow strip of land on remote Vitoya Island into a part of a legend, and many, especially Swedes, consider it hallowed ground. It is a true privilege to be able to visit and see this historical place with our own eyes. So now back to our video and our search for the monument. That's where they found their remains, huh? In uh, 1930. Yeah. Huh? That's good. You got it? <laughs> you got, no? How big was the cup uh, in comparison to the mom? Like, cause About, it, it, you saw it, the cup? It's last year, so it, it's pretty good size. You could tell that it was a cup, right? It was not. Oh. <laughs> because some cubs are big. Was it moving the cub? Yeah, they were. It was moving? Oh. You got it? No. I've seen only the bus. Mm. It would have been nice. I would have loved to see the cub. But so the mom. You probably have it. Maybe I have it by accident. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really see what I have. You probably have it. You got it. Oh, let me see. Oh, you got man. It. You got it. With the baby? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's you got it. Look at that. Oh, my that, God, that girl. Can I? Oh, my God. <laughs> take a picture of the picture. <laughs> she wants to take your picture of your picture. Yeah. Very good. May I? Yes, please. <laughs> That's so sweet of you. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. You're the best. Look at that. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I would have loved that. See, that's why it's nice to have those lenses. <laughs> <laughs> 
I know, but look what she got. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, the mother and the cub. That's, that's pretty good for that. Did you get it, Nancy? No, I don't think so. I don't know how to use your camera. got one of mine. We're scouting a little more. <laughs> Oh my god, the poor people that are stranded here with all these polar bears. Yeah. I see it, yeah. You see a bear? Yeah, it's on the right. Yeah, yeah let's check this one out. Yeah, yeah, just... Yeah. Huh? Uh, I see it. <laughs> There's one over there. There's one over there. That is. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah, I can see that one. Behind the orange hut. <laughs> yeah, it is. The coloring is similar. It's hard. It's hard to keep steady. It's right there at the edge. Uh, like four o'clock now. Right, right, straight there. Oh, right in front of us, right here. Okay. There. You see that little green spot at, at uh, mm -hmm. where the rock, end, yeah. uh, the rock That's what ends? I That's what I was wondering. Is that a bear? Yeah. That's a bear. That is a bear, but it's not moving. So does that make it five? Five bears? Or is it the same bear? <laughs> we need to tag them. <laughs> is it moving? Uh, no, he's just sitting there, uh, right in front of me, straight line yeah, now. Oh, you see him? Great. He doesn't look like a bear. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Oh my goodness. It's amazing to be so close to a polar bear. Really amazing. And these rocks, look, look how beautiful they are, even the rocks. I think that's enough guessing. <laughs> oh, wow. We are so blessed. Mm. Hey, baby. Come on down and play. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> As if he heard me. <laughs> Oh, that's so adorable. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Let me do it too. He's sniffing us. <laughs> yeah, he's going higher and higher. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> Come on, little lazy. No, he's going to be a big one. Not interested. <laughs> we should have brought some salmon. That's right. <laughs> Bye, sweetie pie. <laughs> Those are good by gifts. I guess we had a <laughs> Now, they have to do nothing about fashion. <laughs> no, this will never become a thing. More than how Still scouting, up to the very end. <laughs> the, what do you mean? The, two of them? One. One? One, yeah. Diego? You see a dark mountain? Yeah, yeah. It's right on the lower end. The lower end. Oh, oh, that far away. Oh. Maybe as we get closer. You should ask me. No, no Patrick. <laughs> now I see it. <laughs> Too little, too late. <laughs> well, no, everything was perfect. So plenty of bears. So Chris, how many was that? Was that five with that one? Oh, um, number six. Of number six. The afternoon. Of the and afternoon, we, yeah. We had two, maybe three. I have to get this confirmed. I only heard that there was a third bear in the morning. Right. Um, so that it was far, far in. Yeah. Um, so then it was three this morning, and it was nine in total. Wow. Oh my gosh! Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> nine beers. <laughs> Productive island. <laughs> How you manage, guys, to always stop the previous day? I have no idea. Well, yeah, really I think it's like the best day, and then the next day is like even better. I don't know how you do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Iron Man. Yeah. And you're not the fastest. How, how do you say that? <laughs> He's a fast swimmer though. You only swimmer. like swimming and uh, biking. Biking and running. It's just, yeah. Yeah, yeah but uh, what is an Iron Man? Like 60k or something? <laughs> 100. Hey. <laughs> of running. Everything. No, 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 everything. No, everything. How much is the running part? Is it a marathon? If you hate running, then it's a pretty, pretty interesting choice. Yeah, that's what look at our scout watching out for us, protecting us all the way back there. Ten Ironman. Already stretching our time window. And we should It's as beautiful as it is. We are already stretching our time window. In He's calling them in. Going home. <laughs> oh, we're going to the back. I was shopping for the side. We did have an option and we're like, no, we prefer to be told. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess the trip will go through. Alright, thank you. Alright. Start with you. Thanks. Diego. Right. 